Welcome to Beadsmith Presents Kumi Hemo 101. I am Leslie Rogowski. I'm the creative director for the Beadsmith. And helping me from the Beadsmith today is my pal and creative partner in arms, Leslie Pope. Make wave, Leslie. So yes, we're both Leslie. They call us Team Leslie at the Beadsmith. And uh, so I want to remind everybody that these workshops are being recorded. So I suggest that you not really try to do this along with me, but watch, take notes. The chat room is there for questions and the, the recording will be available to you forever up on Michael's site so you can go back and look at it. Now there is a tutorial for this class. Um, uh, some of you may or may not have been emailed the tutorial yet, but at the very top of our chat window, the first thing that's up there is a PDF link to the tutorial that I'm gonna be following in this demo and that you'll be able to see uh, afterwards when you watch the recorded session, you'll be able to follow along and remember what we did here today. So let's see. Um, so PDF, it's being recorded. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, the other Leslie will answer questions. And uh, you know, if there's a need to for me to stop, um, I don't really want to repeat things too often, but we want you to understand what, what we're doing going forward. So yeah, so this Kumi Emo 101 is made from the Beadsmith kit that's available in Michael's. And I'm going to um, switch you over to see my mat now, feature my mat. There we go. And I'm going to show you what's in the kit. So you get a Kumi Emo disc. And I want you to notice there's a big hole in the middle, blank on one side, numbered on the other side, like a clock, and you can see that there's dots on the side, and numbers, which are very helpful as you move forward into more advanced things. But I'll show you what, for, for today, we're going to do something simple. So you're going to get the mat, uh, the disc. You're going to get four long strands of uh, satin cord, which we're going to fold in half in order to make the braid. You'll get a pack of, um, with the Zap jewelry gel, which is fabulous because it's got some viscosity to it. It's not really, really drippy. And that's mostly for knots and for sealing the ends of things. You're also gonna have eight bobbins, which are this soft plastic. And that's where the ends of your eight cords are gonna go. And you also get a little blister pack with findings for the ends, plus a little extra piece for hanging a pendant, if you want to hang a pendant on this. You'll get uh, some fire line, which uh, we're going to use to seal off the ends. And I think that's everything in the kit. OK, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is take my four cords. We have two shades of silver a gold and a black. So how about this? The Pantone colors of the year for 2020 are gray and yellow. I interpret them to be silver and gold. So we're right on trend here. So I just have folded my cords in half to find the middle and I've brought the ends together. So they're even at the other end. And I'm going to make an overhand knot with both of these with that. So here's my loop. And I'm going to take the cords through around and bring the loop through and kind of keep it close to the ends of the cords. And I'm just going to tug on each one of these to pull them tight. This part is going to be the end of the braid. We're going to build the braid out this way. So this goes 
from top to bottom through the disc. Now setting up a kumihimo disc, you have to know where the cords are to go. I wanna show you in the tutorial. Can you see that little diagram? This is the way kumihimo diagrams are usually presented. You have the circle and you have the cords and here we have A, B, C, D because we have four colors. I'm not sure if you can see this clearly, but we have black going 12 o'clock and three o'clock. And then three o'clock to six o'clock, we have color, another color, and they're forming right angles. I'm gonna show you what I mean, but uh, with the actual cords, you can see in the photos, these are all photos, by the way, through this, um, how you set up for what I figured out to be the spiral in four colors. The kits also have two sizes, two gauges of the satin cord, which is really cool because it adds this wonderful texture. So here's our desk. And looking at my chart, I'm going to pull a black one up to the numbers are between the notches. You could sort of see there's little notches going all around. So I'm pulling one of my black cords into the notch to the right of the, of the top dot. And then I'm gonna bring my other cord over to the side of the, three, the dot at three o'clock. There's a number eight there. And I'm going to follow my chart around and pick the dark gray and bring it down to the slot that's shown in the in the diagram. And then I have one of the gold cords. Whoops, what did I forget here? The other gray goes to the other side of the black. So that's what I have so far. So you have black, black, dark gray, dark gray. Now I'm going to put my gold cords. This will go back down there. So, and it doesn't matter if it's not exactly if they kind of overlap right here, because that's going to get hidden inside your little finding at the end. So I'm going to pull the gold cord down to the left of this one at six o'clock. Now over at the nine o'clock mark, I'm going to bring the other gold. And then we have the light gray and the light gray. Get under there. So you can see that to make this particular pattern, we have the same color facing each other when you get started. So this is for the spiral pattern. If you were doing other patterns, your disc chart would look different. Now these little bobbins are very handy when you have long long cords. You're going to open them up. And wind it around and around and around. Yes, I think the bobbins need to be smaller too. I just hope yes. And then after you wind this around, these just kind of snap closed. They're very soft and easy to manipulate. You may not need the bobbins, although these are very long and I kept getting mine caught under my, uh, under the wheels of my desk chair. But you're gonna wind them all up. And I'm gonna leave these for now, just for time, for time's sake, I'll be able to do this. So here's the Kumihimo mantra to remember we're gonna be pulling these cords from one slot and placing them in another slot. And our good friend and fellow beater, Jill Wiseman, gave me the best way, the best mnemonic to remember how to do this. So the, the real phrase is down to the right and up to the left, which means I'm gonna take the cord from the right upper right and bring it down to the right. Notice that I'm still holding my disc facing 
the same way. Down to the right, now I'm gonna take the cord on the left and bring it up to the left. Down to the right, up to the left. Kumi Hemo is down right, up lefting. Lifting. <laughs> down right, up lifting. That's what you have to remember. Down to the right, up to the left. Now, I only did half of the first step. Down to the right, up to the left. And then you're gonna give your disc a quarter turn. It doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, but whatever direction you choose to turn your disc, keep turning it in that same direction. Now I have two more chords this way. I'm gonna take the chord from the right and bring it down to the right. You see how I'm always working with this straight in front of me, up to the left, a quarter turn. Down to the right, up to the left, a quarter turn. Now here's a secret, down to the right. It is very hard, especially when you're beginning, to remember where you were when you're doing your kumihimo. So in order to always know what your next motion is, when you do down to the right, if you have to put your disc down, always leave it with one down to the right. And no matter where you put it, you'll always know when you pick it up that your next move is the up left. Has everybody got that? Well, we have a very young Kumihimo person there. You can do this. <laughs> so I've done down to the right, up to the left, quarter turn, down to the right, up to the left, make sure you put that in the notch so it doesn't come loose, quarter turn. Down to the right, and I'm gonna leave that while I talk to you. Make sure they're in the notches. This is where your little braid is gonna to start to come out. And I want you to see how this is even with the flat of the board, the flat of the disc. You don't want this to start to sink too far underneath. It'll, it'll um, change the tension of your braid. So I'm gonna put this down for right now. And I have another one with a lot more started and my bobbins going. I'll hold it up here so you can see there. Got it, right? So they're all just there. And you'll see that I have my three facing down so I know which way to hold my disc. Now I'm back to the disc. And you're going to continue and I'm at up left, quarter turn, down to the right, and I would continue to do this. This one, make sure you're snug in there so they don't come out. And now you can see the braid coming out the bottom. Now this is, the discs are very light. Those of you that have them already will know. I like when I work, my, I have small hands and I can still man manage with this to reach under when I'm braiding once it really starts to come out and hold it with my fingers. So as I'm gonna be braiding, I'm gonna be holding it underneath like this. And you can give it a little tug every now and then. That's pretty much kumihimo, you guys, the basic eight braid kumihimo. So uh, are there any questions so far about this? Yes, there was one question. So we have someone who doesn't have the kit. Okay. She wants to know how long you would make your cords. What's your, what's the formula for how long yes. you make your cords? These are pre-cut, obviously, the cords that are in the kit. But the instructions that I provide to you tells you how to measure the kumi hemo cords. So basically you have eight cords. Now the kit comes with four cords that you fold in half, but which you can do yourself if you wanna you know, string them from a rat tail, from a satin cord spool or other cords. But you basically want each of your eight cords. This is for a 20 inch necklace. Um, 
would be about 60 inches long. You want each cord to be about three times as long as the length of the finish rope that you're gonna make. So you got that each cord three times as long, whether it's for a bracelet or a necklace. And it's always good to have extra, but that's about the, the end of it. You don't need a lot at the end because you're gonna be wrapping it off very close to the ends and gluing it into a finding. So it's not like you need a lot to be finishing. Did that answer your question, whoever asked that? Three yeah, times. I, I lost, I lost her somewhere in the feed. Okay, each <laughs> cord yeah. is three times as long as the length of what your desired finish piece should be, you know, minus the clasp and everything like that. Okay, the next question is, what uh, do you know the gauges of the cords in the kit? Uh, they're one millimeter and 1.5 millimeter cords. Okay. Yeah. The next one is I normally use a weight with my when I do Kumohimo. Is there any reason why you're not using a weight? Thank you. Yes, it was just too much to manage here. And because I use my fingers, she's talking about her he, I can't see. There's a lot of people tie, um, attach a little weight, a fishing weight um, or a bulldog clip or something like that to help to hold the, to pull the cord down. I find that um, I don't need it because I'm holding this and pulling it like this. Um, but for people who may not have, um, uh, who, who may have some dexterity issues um, arthritis or arthritis or finger issues like that. You can attach pretty much anything and it'll just always give you that kind of equal tension. But here's the caveat. Make sure your cords are tucked into those notches because if you do have a weight and it starts to pull your braid too far down into the center hole, your braid is gonna start to spread out. So you can see with the braid that you want it to all the stitches and the, the twisting and braiding is all gonna be pretty even. Also remember, it's not a race. You can take your time. <clears throat> if you have to examine underneath, make sure you pull that right down to the right before you turn your disc around because I, I don't know how I could tell you how to recognize. <laughs> it takes a really long time to recognize. And I have myself, as much as I've done this, had to take out almost my entire braid before I reached a point where I realized where I was. So just remember that. But yes, good point, thank you. You can attach a weight or something else to hold on to. Um, the disc is very lightweight. I know that with the Maru dies, which are these beautiful wooden Kumihimo looms, they use weights a lot. Um, and the, bod, the bobbins, yes, you can wander things around. There are smaller bobbins, but the, for this kit, this is the size and you get eight of them for each one for each cord. Also, someone wanted to know if you don't have bobbins, what would you suggest that they wrap their cord around? Oh, you can wrap it around a, a piece of a bead mat or something, something that's not gonna really put a crimp in your cord. You wanna keep it loose around there. You can just wrap it around your fingers like this and um, put a little clip on it to hold it. The good thing about the bobbins is that it's easy to unwind when you need more. So if I'm working on this and I'm, you know, you need overhang in order to, to braid, I can just actually, I don't even have to undo the bobbin, I can just roll it out, you know, and of course the satin tails, the satin cord is very slippery, so it's easy to do that. Hope said but you can also try. Be considered an option. Hope said you can also try DMC card cardboard uh, the embroidery floss card yeah 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 just make sure you don't do it too tight around there because they can put little crimps in them and once you start to braid with it they'll disappear because the stitches are close together um but thank you hope good good tips good tips all right i want to get into the finishing part right now 
if there's any other questions about the braiding, it's really very repetitive and very meditative in Zen. So it's down, right, up, left, quarter turn in the same direction. Pulling it into the slots, down to the right, up to the left. And I have my finger on my cords here because you do tend to sort of slide around in this little hole. Down to the right. See, I forgot. Up to the left, quarter turn, here I am. Okay, down to the right. Now, I am going to take this off my loom, even though I don't have anywhere near my, my uh, when, when you get finished, you would take this off the loom and the instructions tell you how to tie this off, all right? But I think so I can preserve the rest of my cords. I'm gonna show you on the beginning end first. And normally you would take this off when you were finished. You would tie an overhand knot in the other end, take it off. So you would have your long rope without the ends on it, like this. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to finish this off so you can jam it into this <laughs> little end cone that comes with. I'm going to take a small piece of fire line, which I'm gonna take from my other spool. And you don't need much, just enough to hold on to. I have like about a, a foot here. I can do this for you guys so it's not as confusing. All right. Right underneath your overhand knot, you're going to take your fire line and holding a tail of about a couple inches, you're going to bind it off as close as you can to that, just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. And then you're gonna tie a knot, a couple square knots. And all you're really doing is holding this from unraveling at this point. So I'm just gonna knot it, knot it, knot it. I'm gonna undo my overhand knot. It's pretty easy to do with the, the satin cord. So I had cut my ends. Yours will be looped if it's at the beginning. And I'm going to take, uh, you can use a scissors to cut the satin cord, but I find using a nice sturdy wire snip works better. And I'm going to leave myself about a quarter inch from the wrapped thread and I'm gonna snip my cords. I said, I'm gonna snip my cords. You might have to do it one at a time. There we go. Snipping these off. And this is the part that's gonna go inside the little um, end cap. And the, the um, satin cord's pretty good. It doesn't really fray very much um, at this point during this. You don't want to play with it, but okay. And trim it down till there. They're sort of even. So it just looks like that. Yeah. So we just got an interesting question, Leslie. Yes. Pam says, if you get to the end of your braid and your bracelet is too short, can you add more cords to be tied off to make the bracelet longer? Not easily, no. My okay. suggestion would be to put the ends on and use a little bit of chain or some nice little beaded section to add length to your piece. Okay, so. You have this. Now you're gonna take 
your glue. And here's a glue tip for you. Whenever I glue, I have like a ton of scratch pads of paper. And this is what I put my piece on so that it doesn't get stuck to everything else. So I'm gonna take my glue. When you open your glue, mine's a mess. You're not gonna take the whole thing off of here. You're just gonna take the, the end off the glue and you're gonna saturate your satin cord with the glue. And this is my, my glue process. Some people would say, just be, don't put the glue on there, put the glue inside your end cap and then jam this in. I put glue on the end and let it dry. And then it holds itself together so that I can use my wire snip to sort of taper it a little bit to get it to fit more easily into the end cap. And that's what the instructions say. They tell you to glue it, uh, let it dry. I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper to sort of mold mine here so that I make it narrow enough to show you. Now you're just going to put this right inside. And you can push it with your fingers or so your end cap will fit down over the ends of your cords and over the thread so that you have. Now this I've used my jump rings to put the, um, the clasp on already, but before you put the other end cap on, if you wanna use this extra little piece here that comes with the kit, there we go. You can see it's a, a slider with a little ring on it. And I have used that on my necklace to attach a pendant. Uh, my pendant is one of our centerline components, which they sell at Michael's. And you can pick um, beads to match the necklace colors, but you can really, you can jump ring anything on here. Um, at the end of your tutorial, speaking of centerline, I've already done a few workshops using centerline components. So if you want to learn how to put beads in one of these, you can look at the uh, workshops on the Michael site and find the centerline components and it will give you the tutorials and all the details. It's very simple, tinier beads, but very simple. So you can see that this slider on there has a little ring and you just jump ring on whatever pendant you want for your necklace. So after you've done this, you're gonna do the same thing to the other end. Remember I said when you finish, you're gonna, you tied it into an overhand knot and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take your piece of fire line and you're gonna wrap, 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 wrap the end to make it nice and snug. Then you're going, and it won't come undone, I promise you. You just, cause that thread is very thin and it's actually gonna really pull in um, without cutting the, the satin cord. And you're gonna snip to a quarter inch and then you're gonna glue it, let it dry, trim it down if you need to with your wire snip once the glue is dry and then push the end cap on and using uh, chain nose pliers or a flat nose pliers, which is a staple in every jewelry maker's toolbox. You're gonna use the jump rings that come with the kit of the accessories, and you're gonna add the other, the clasps. It's a beautiful little silver tone toggle that comes with your kit. Two more, two more questions. Yep. The first one is, we might not have an answer for this. She says, do you know how long the cords are in the kit? Like the limps of the cord in the kit? That's um, they're about 60 inches, I think. I'll tell you right now. They're more than two yards long. So they're more than 60 inches. One, two, they're about two and a half yards long, each cord. Okay. 
And the next one is, is there a technique for adding a pendant into the braid while you're going along as opposed to adding the slide bail? There is. That actually is a subject for a future workshop because in that I would show you how to stop the braid, put a pendant on the unbraided cord and then pick up the braid again. Okay. So if I have a necklace, a cord coming out and then you have your braid here, what you would do is feed each cord, each long cord individually, one by one for all eight cords through your pendant. And make sure like you would, I would feed one cord through, put it right back in the same slot. You're it's, off camera. It's really the subject for another workshop yeah. to add, oh, that's, that's, a, that's add something said. into it. Did that, did that give you some uh, information? Was that? That was How crazy. easy is, is it to add beads? I'm so glad you asked that, Heidi, because on January 20th, I am doing this necklace that I'm wearing, which shows you how to add beads. Do you see how I have some beads in there? And I chose to just bead the first part. Yeah, I mean the middle part a little bit, but it will show you how you pre-string the beads on the cords and bring them up. And that is uh, going to be, I guess it's two o'clock central time, same as this workshop on Wednesday, January 20th. That's Kumihimo 201. And that'll be the next one. So Heidi, hopefully I'll see you there. How okay. does the cap stay on when the glue on the cords is dry? I just answered that. Okay, you, you it, have to put more glue in. That's yeah. when you put the glue in the cap and put it back in. Did I and not say that? I'm I think sorry. You did. No, you, you, no, you probably did. So yeah, the next one is- Yeah, you glue the cords into that little, you glue the cords so that they stay stuck together and let them dry. And then when you can clip at it to make it fit maybe a little easier, you, you do have to put glue then in the end cap first. Okay. So, the next question uh, is, how many projects can you make out of one kit? Well, I'm glad you asked that question too, because it depends on how long your pieces are. The third Kumihima workshop I'm doing, which is in February, um, sorry, that'll be in March. March 3rd to 17th, I'm not sure which, you will be able to make two things from the one kit. And I have done a short little choker and a bracelet, separating the colors out. So I have, I used just the light and dark gray in this one and just the black and gold for the bracelet. The braiding is done exactly the same. And I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make beaded beads. It's just stringing a circle of beads. So you have a little extra detail. And this is obviously a shorter necklace. Um, so it fits like a choker. And again, you can add, see I have chain, I have um, Kumihimo endings and cones from Michaels that have a chain already attached. And this workshop then will be in March. I believe this is scheduled. So that's, that's how many you can get. The kit itself has obviously a finite um, number of things. Depends if you wanna make a 20 inch rope. I didn't really have enough left over after I made the one we did today, um, which is pretty long uh, to make anything else. Um, but there's all kinds of cords you can do. The, the satin cord is really fun and easy on your fingers to use and comes in a bazillion colors. Um, I'm not sure what the, what the range is at Michael's for all the colors of the satin cord, but that is definitely something that's relatively inexpensive to try. Holds its knots nice. It looks nice when it's braided. Um, the thing about going, getting back to the adding beads thing, and I'll talk more about this in that workshop, is the beads 
have to have, they have to have big enough holes to go over whatever cord you're using. So for instance, in the necklace that I'm wearing, I only strung beads on the one millimeter cord. They wouldn't fit, and I used size six seed beads, Toho seed beads in this case, had the big, big holes. I explored a couple things. But you can find lots of holes, lots of beads with bigger holes and just add a few big ones. Um, and then, as I, as I described earlier, for yet another workshop to learn how to add things to the rope itself as you're working on it so that you would then have a bead, a bead, a bead, like as, as wide as your rope, a bead, a bead. Um, somebody's asking about doing wire in Kumihimo. Who is that? Diane. Yes, absolutely you can use wire in Kumihimo. That's a whole other ball game because of the way it has to be ended. You want to use, you can use flexible beading wire. There's certainly people that use wire, um, a harder wire. You know, and I would say you would use a pretty fine gauge of wire for anybody familiar with that. Um, 24, 26, 28 yeah. gauge, you know, fine like wire that you would use for wire crochet. And then there's a different way to finish it off. And because you don't usually, you, glue wire into a finding. If you are doing kumihimo with wire, you probably want to get end caps that have a hole. So you could finish your wire onto um, uh, an eye pin and string it up through the hole of, a, um, of an end cap. And again, um, you, you guys are giving me ideas for scheduling out for the rest of the year here. <laughs> so um, kumihimo with wire, of course, there's lots of colors of flexible beading wire that are out there and you can definitely string all kinds of stuff on them because it's so fine. Um, and, and flexible beading wire, I think, you know, I've used like 0 0.015, 0 0.018, you know, like stringing wire. So we have a question about, are you going to show additional projects with different color schemes? That's a yes and a yes, right? Yes, right now I'm working with this because I work for the beadsmith and this is the beadsmith kit. We're, we're hoping with Michael's to be able to get more of a Kumihima line in. So you guys ask for it. Ask for it at your local Michael's and online. Yep. Obviously you can buy satin cord and combine all the colors. Um, there's also other cords um, coming up. I'm also doing some macrame workshops and I fell in love with these really saturated bright colors of what they call cotton cord. They're about one millimeter thick, 1.5 millimeter thick. So you can get beads on them. I use the size six beads. Uh, you want a sneak preview? Wait a second, real fast. <laughs> oh, here comes. So this is with the cotton cord. This is a very bright green, but you can see I've strung, it's kind of Christmassy, golden green. Really easy to manipulate, really soft. You can absolutely use this in macrame. And it would have a little bit of a finer rope to it, like the bracelet that I did with the thinner cord. You can see the difference in the thickness of the ropes that you make. And here's a, here's the, you can really see the spiral pattern. There's really cool patterns too. You can do dots and you can do kind of an argyle thing. And the more you play, don't be afraid to make mistakes either. Just play around and uh, find what's comfortable for you and what fits the style of things that you're gonna wanna, wanna wear or give. What's the difference between a square disc and a round disc? A square disc makes a flat braid. That's the difference. And that's a whole other thing too, how you add beads. You can add beads along the edges. Um, when I get to doing um, flat kumihimo down the road, then I'll really be able to show you. I like using wire in the flat kumihimo. 
rather than doing it in the round because I find that it's easier to control the consistency of the flat braid and that's just me. Um, I, I like that it makes that kind of a cuff. What else? I definitely want to try the square disc and make a flat braid. Yes, yes. And I don't know how there's a way to, to um, share with me what you make. My email at work is leslie at beadsmith.com. Just email me a, a small JPEG, please. And share that you, uh, that you took the class and, and what you made. Um, I, I think I see a Pinterest board or a Facebook group or something in the future to share, to share the work that you guys do. What other cords? Almost anything that you can manipulate into a braid and be able to end. Remember, if you're working like with leather, which a lot of Kumi artists really like to use leather, the leather cord, um, there's a really neat way to manipulate and fold the flat cords. Um, there's also, you want to make sure you know how you're going to end it. Um, there are certainly larger findings. There's flat findings that you can put all the ends of the cords in. Uh, so this is the tip of the iceberg, this class. This is 101. <laughs> um, would you happen to know what the diameter of the disc is, Leslie? No, it is six inches, just shy of six inches. So I can hold it in my hands. And I said, I have pretty small hands. And it's foam, for those of you that don't have it, it's really lightweight. So what else? Am That's I on it. Instagram? I have an Instagram page. It's a personal page, but there's, it's um, Doodle Beater is my Instagram. And I do post bead stuff. But I warn you, it is my personal page. So there is some stuff you may not agree with my points of view on things, but there you go. Does GIMP work? I haven't tried it. I mean, I've only, but yes. And that's like a folding thing too. Like when you would make lanyards, we used to call them and there's all those stitches you could do. You kind of had to pay attention to how you folded the flat surface so it didn't twist. So sure. Any of the plastic lacings? Um, embroidery floss would be really exquisitely fine work and almost not worth the effort. Although there's other flosses and, and things that um, DMC puts out through Michaels that um, you can use. Uh, embroidery floss and ribbon. Ribbon would be cool, very textural. Um, thanks, Gloria. Jill the grape seems very stretchy. stretchy Should yeah. I stretch it? That's a good question too. Um, it can be. That's why the cords that you use will determine how stretchy it is. And that's also why you want to make sure when you're doing this that you're keeping your tension consistent and you always want that braid to be right up in here and you always want your cords to be tucked in to the little notches, the little slots. Is there an end piece to put on both ends to hang glasses or masks? I, I think they sell them, you know, but you can you can put like an, a, a um, lever back earring finding on the ends if you wanted to do that and you could hang it. I'm not sure it would be, I guess it would be pretty lightweight. I've made mask things. This is, I don't know if this is, it would come around your neck. You'd kind of be hiding half your necklace. I don't know, because <laughs> it would hang like this for you to hang your mask. But all you have to do is change out the clasp for something that's going to be able to hook onto the mask cords. Yeah, is that, you know, that sounds, that sounds right to everybody that you could do that. Um, yeah. A lobster class. Thank Lost you, Gloria. It, yeah. There you go. That's it. I like the lever back earrings because they're just a little bigger than the lobsters, but they're still very lightweight. Um, so stretching it along the way again, back, back to that question. You just, yes, you kind of do the having a weight on it helps. But remember, I showed you how I was holding my disc and pulling from the other side with my fingers. So my thumbs on the front and my fingers are holding the 
the rope coming out the back. And just keep looking at it every once in a while as it's coming, coming out the bottom and checking to make sure that your tension is consistent. And you'll get it, you'll get it. You, you'll find yourself with a natural tension. Don't, don't like really struggle with it. Give yourself a natural but firm tension as you put the cords into the slots of the disc. There's the PDF again, Leslie Pope just posted it. And uh, if you have trouble downloading it from here for some reason, go to the workshop on the michaels.com website and it should be there. So let's see, I told you about my next classes and are there any other questions? I do have a square disc, but I don't have it handy right now. Um, you can Google square kumihima disc and you'll see it. It's a square disc with notches on two sides and a little square hole instead of a round hole. And it's about the same size. So on behalf of Beadsmith and Michaels then, thank you so much for joining this class. I loved all your questions. I hope you learned something. For those of you who were already doing chemo, I hope that it expanded your knowledge. And for those that you are, are new to it, come back and join us to learn how to add beads on the 20th. And I, I hope this got you juiced to do more kumihimo. It really does, thank you, it really does go pretty quickly. I don't think I'll ever do like a bead embroidery rope again because this is so much faster. So remember January 20th for Kumihimo 201. And you can see all the other projects that I've already done for the Beadsmith for Michaels. So with that, happy new year, everybody. Here's to brighter days, wear your mask, stay healthy. And thanks again for joining me, Leslie Rogowski and Leslie Pope, Team Leslie from the Beadsmith and our helper from Michaels. Where is she? She's up there. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.